Do you guys miss each other during games? Yeah. During games? Yeah. Well, I can always look over to the bench and see him. I mean, when I'm sitting on the bench, I can look on the ice and get lost in his eyes. But you can't be with him. I mean, spiritually, we're there. Long distance relationship. <laughs> yeah, if you want to say that. Jeremy, you're awfully quiet. Do not miss me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I miss him. But uh, I think we have those TV timeouts, so that's easy to do. And, like, we have our rituals, right? So um, I thought of a bunch of jokes last year. So I was preoccupied during games. And he told me to think of jokes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. There were some dirty ones, too. Mm, bad <laughs> so, ones. Yeah. A little joke book on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just stuff that we kind of do to keep each other, you know, engaged and not engaged. You know, yeah. Some, yeah. Because sometimes you get a little bit too focused, like too zoned in, and you got to uh -huh. like broaden your horizon a little bit. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's letting three or four goals. Sometimes it's just, you know, got to keep playing. And, no, sometimes it's better to have a little bit of laugh about it than, you know, be sour about it. And we know each other that sometimes when you get to the bench, it's better to just be quiet, let the guy just do what he does best. And then sometimes you want to you know, try to force him into talking, mm -hmm. basically, and try to open him up and, and uh, you know, relax a little bit. I love if one of you guys, like, faked a... Like an equipment issue or something. What so you, you have faked? to go over. Fake an equipment. Just Please. an excuse. You're a goal. Like skaters fake everything. They dive. They do all these various things. So if you just like faked an equipment injury and just like kind of did that over and then got to the bench and was just like, just kidding, buddy. And then went back. <laughs> it would probably make his day. Well, we had, we did have a shout out together that day. That's right. We did. Yeah. That was a that's, wee thing. That's right. That's a wee thing. Kind of cool. Uh, it, you know what else is a wee thing? You guys. This one. Guys. This one. <laughs> Look how small. Just a little small guy. boy. Uh, oh. <laughs> you thought yeah. we were making a penis joke? Yeah, no, oh, no, no, no. It's something. This is a PG okay. show. Pizza it's small. Um, Marshand earlier made a <laughs> penis joke. So Yeah, Marshand made a penis joke day. about me. Not yeah. much. Uh, keeps down. Why are you guys friends? Goalies, typically, if they're fighting for one spot, there should be a little fight there. Obviously, you two being friends has worked very well, but why are you such good friends? Start me. Yeah, I can I can start. I think yeah. it goes down to kind of a personality we are. You know, we grew up in the kind of same of a no environment. He's from Alaska. I'm from northern Sweden. Kind of the same thing, yeah, if you think about it. Uh, smaller cities or towns even. Uh, my wife always said that I grew up in a tree because there's only 300 people in where <laughs> I grew up. But, you know, and, you know, the personalities for ourselves are very carefree, loving guys that just loves being around the boys and... Mm -hmm kind of figured out when we start talking obviously i reached out to sway uh when i signed saying that hey this is what i feel that we need to be you know be doing i'm gonna try to push you every single day but i'm still gonna be back up in your corner uh if you're the one playing and he's just responded very well to it and from that moment i knew okay this guy is gonna be something special and uh, but i couldn't know that possibly we're gonna be you know best friends on the team but that uh, kind of, you know, when we met each other and we had that little uh, bonding trip down to, where was that, with the team? Uh, First season. Yeah, down in the Navy Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, after that point, like, yeah, this is, yeah, I can go to war with this guy. Sealed, right? Yeah, I think he nailed it. I think, um, you know, as soon as he signed, he shot me a text, and I thought that was, you know, huge. Because obviously being a younger guy, it was my first full year going in, and... Um, you know, just a lot of unknowns, and I was really excited. And now to have a new teammate and uh, obviously a goalie partner, I, I've always really enjoyed, you know, getting to know my teammates on a personal level. And goalie partners, you know, as we all know, it's uh, it's just kind of a different element of of a friendship you need because, again, we, we know there's only one net, but we understand that it's a team game and there's 82 of those, you know, and so it's going to be a shared position. And we want to do everything we can to help this team win. And um, yeah, I mean, the first time we hung out, it was an automatic brothership, friendship. It was it was so seamless, and, um, you know, it, it just goes beyond the ice, too. I mean, he allowed me to come into his family. Uh, you know, I'm basically the third kid, you know, <laughs> and it's so special. Yeah, you're Uncle Jeremy now. Yeah, kids as well, so, <laughs> so yeah. it's just been really, really special. And, you know, my dad's the same way. Every time he talks to me, he's like, how's Linus? You know, I'm like, okay, I'm, do I'm doing all right, too, Dad. You know, <laughs> it's like one of the – it's so special to, to share that, you know, and – uh, it's definitely developed into you know more of a family environment thing rather just a friendship. I say this with all due respect, but goalies are typically pretty weird, weird mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. What's the weirdest thing about the other guy? About Sway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm, keep, to I'm gonna keep that illusion of the yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna I, tell. All right. What's the weirdest thing about you? Weirdest thing about me? Yeah. That he agreed to do this interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weirdest thing about me? Well, uh, I don't. I'm not the one that should say that. I think that's someone else's. You should talk to my wife about that. What's <laughs> yeah, my wife would know most. Yeah, she yeah. she knows every dark 100%. secret. <laughs> I don't know much, man. You got. Hey, you're in a tough position now because he wouldn't say the weirdest thing about you. I don't. Now. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like you got great style. Like that would be. It's like weird to me because I don't have good style. <laughs> so like it's like I I ask him for style advice. You know, it's like his the, suits are unbelievable. The vest in a suit was yeah, unbelievable. So no, it's not weird at all. It's fucking sick. So yeah. Are you superstitious at all? Because you change your goalie mask and and setup more than any goaltender I've ever seen. I just like changing it up. You know, uh, I'm starting to get to that point as well now when I don't really want to change because I'm getting um, how should I say it? like I don't have any more ideas <laughs> like in the beginning it was easy uh, but now like last year I wanted to just do something simple and then for this year I'm like oh my god do I have to come with something new again but and we, we just talked about it me and the Bauer guys and I'm like yeah you li- just, just tilt the stripes <laughs> just, just tilt the stripes <laughs> and just keep it and it's it's one of those things as well like you want to be recognizable at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have the marbling on my past, which is something that only I do. So I'm probably going to keep that for the rest of my career, basically. Uh, and then for the centennial ones, I think I put down a little bit more effort into that. But those things are kind of easy because then you have like a third year jersey and you can come up with new stuff and you're not going to wear the stuff for, I don't know, 40 plus games you're just gonna have them for what is it like 13 games mm-hmm. when we use the third year c um so it's a little bit easier at that point how much do you care or pay attention to jerseys or uniforms because like i mean you guys have to plan around that more than anybody else on the team you've definitely started to like think more about your gear yeah you've changed parents. my life yeah i <laughs> Yeah, I, I, do, I have that. Uh, unfortunately, that's both a good and a bad thing. Yeah. Like, I make people aware of what they're doing, actually. Sure, yeah. I've, I've never made more changes to my gear ever because uh, I was always just, like, a stock guy. You know, it was just, like... Uh, whatever matches. Whatever makes saves. Yeah, I don't care. But it's been really special to kind of talk shop with you and, and go through the things that, you know, can help us in different ways because the game changes, you know. And, um, you know, when you started and I wasn't born yet, uh, it was, you know, you're wearing these pads. <laughs> wow. <that> shots fired. <laughs> That's shots it was, fired. It was uh, wearing different pads. And, like, it's amazing to see these changes and, like, um, you know, you being on top of it has opened my eyes a lot. And it's definitely helped uh, help my game and my perspective of everything, too. So mm-hmm. let's talk about the hugs. Uh, Jeremy, I saw in an interview you said you've been hugging your goalies since college. I like hugging. Do you guys yeah. ever talk about that, or is it like a hey, like it was before I met you? It's it's cool. Oh, there's nothing nothing else like it, man. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely. I don't know. I didn't expect it to grow into what it is today. I got sent a video from South Korea the other day. No kidding. Yeah, two goalies hugging it out. Really, it's out of control. It's like one of the most incredible things that. Again, you know, we just thought it was gonna be. It's just a, a hug. joke, right? And it's just a hug, but it's it's really not, man. It's uh. It's amazing to see the camaraderie and the hockey world really taking it by storm. And, um, you know, I think it's just like a deeper meaning, like what we didn't realize at the time, but mm-hmm. now we do. And especially with youth players and and uh, junior players, even uh, just seeing that uh, just friendship and and truly a celebration of how hard it is to win. Yeah. And also you got to touch his base on like the human aspect of it all. Um because you guys said it as well, like there's usually a, lot, a little bit of a fighting mm-hmm. and you have that competitiveness towards each other and you might not like the guy because he's getting more starts or something like that. But what we kind of agree upon is that if the other guy is doing well, most of the times the team is going to do well, which makes that when it's my time mm-hmm. to shine, the team's going to be playing you know, with a lot of confidence and it's going to be easier for me to play well. So if you start being sour, that's just, it's gonna show, and you know, it, we know it, we're like we're around each other every single day. So if you're gonna be sour every single day, no one's gonna be want to be around you. Mm-hmm. But if you're happy, cheerful, and you know, supportive, people are gonna you know, follow the tracks and follow mm-hmm. your uh, follow you. Did you ever see the uh, the tattoo? I've seen a couple, couple. the tattoo, couple yeah. of tattoos uh, from last. Uh, I saw so like cool. this. Uh, 
during like right before the playoffs. Yeah. That one, incredible, that man, awesome. So I never thought I would make it to I a was, tattoo. <laughs> we got like at least four, four or five running around now. Like <laughs> it's insane. Better for yeah. that than for something else, though. Right? Yeah, right. yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's it's good work too. So uh, yeah. who who throws a better hug between the two? Who, who do you think is <laughs> Me better? Meet in between. I don't know. It's just changes every it does it gets a little different every time well on the wind i'm to to be fair i've have not gotten a warning yet from the medical staff but sway has yeah. about his hugs what wow <laughs> about coming, like lifting or, or like coming hot yeah coming yeah. hot yeah, yeah. Wow. so it was I, that was actually <laughs> when yeah that was when i scored yeah <laughs> well i mean <laughs> if there's hot. ever a yeah. time but yeah. he it, i understand them as well because you know they don't want us to oh actually we there's a sick picture of us jump hugging in buffalo <laughs> remember that yeah back-to-back shutsies yeah, and then did, all of a did. sudden i came in hot as well like because I, I, I told yeah i told you like <laughs> if you do it one more time i'm coming hot yeah and we got solid 15 inches <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, like so high like, <laughs> <laughs> what um, did the training staff say yeah, they just like chill training. out like, yeah like yeah they the asked more, us to not jump basically. the more flying okay. hugs and what what would you fucking do? Like, would you come in and be like, "Hey, uh, it's not what you think, but I think in the second period I like hyperextended both of my shoulders, right, and it's yeah. just like from go- clearly <laughs> yeah. from going like this." Yeah, yeah toe picked on my way in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is not what we want. Yeah. He mentioned the goal. How bad did you want a goal last Incredible. year? Incredible. No, I've. It's coming. Like, I'm no uh, yeah. doubt about it. You came it, close, like, a couple times, it but fun. it seemed like you really wanted it, of especially course. after he got one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's going to get probably three more, you know? So it's, like, it's so cool to to see it in person. So I've seen one hole-in-one and one goalie goal in real life now, you know? Okay. So um, I haven't done it personally, but <laughs> I want to. So it's just, like, really cool. And, yeah, it's a moment that you never forget. So uh, it'll come, and I'm going to keep working at it, and so is he. It's going to yeah. be awesome. We talked about the good stuff. What's the what's the most your relationships ever been tested? Once we got no. sent down, and you took a fika bun, the last fika bun, from me at the table. We were talking, we were fika and it oh, was yeah. You, I wanted two, and you took one. That was a bad. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Bad. <laughs> what's a fika bun? I was gonna about. say. Yeah, what? We just said we so. Back like home, Swedish thing. obviously, Swedes, yeah. we, we do love our fika. We basically, you sit down, have a coffee and a pastry, and you shoot shit. Okay. Yeah. Like, kind of like what we do now. We, we, when, but we just eat a coffee and pastry. And it, it's like, you just relax and enjoy life, basically, and try to implement it, and Sway's just fully bought in. And mm-hmm. he does that, and one day, actually, we had one extra s- cinnamon bun that my wife made, and he loves it. And I just kind of snagged the last one, and he was eyeing it for a while, just being, you know, like, you have to be a polite, mm-hmm. be a very polite one. And I just said, as a host, you have to be polite too. Mm, but he's so sneaky, he's just. But I mean, come on, you, I didn't get mad. I was just like disappointed. No. <laughs> you, you were disappointed that <laughs> it was in my belly and not yours. Uh, Jeremy, you play guitar, right? Yep. So I went to come up with a fun guitar question for you, and. I went to Google Jeremy Swayman music and I was tired and I accidentally Googled Linus Olmark music. Nice. And the first thing that comes up if you Google Linus Olmark music is a playlist you have called Rawr that is over 24 hours long, <laughs> has a shitload of fucking songs. And honestly, he was over. I was going through it. I was like, How the hell I told him about that? it. We laughed about it. And five minutes later, I was still scrolling through. I was like, I'll tell you what, bud. It's a pretty solid playlist, <laughs> yeah. but it's got some. I think it's got some Nickelback on there. It's got some Paramore on you there. You can just basically see the transitioning from me being a sixteen-year-old kid to now. <laughs> that is so. Do you have like one playlist that you only twenty-four dump music hours? No, in? that's long. basically where I throw everything that I can't just you know. Okay, this is a solid rock song. Like I have a. How much can you swear on this podcast? Yeah, well, yeah. However as much, you much want. As, there's okay, like two words we don't so, do anymore, but <laughs> yeah. So I have um. <laughs> So I have a playlist called Nothing uh, Nothing for Pussies. <laughs> okay. Basically, so it's if you look at my hat, it says blah. So yeah. it's death metal, stuff like that, okay. very screamish kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I put like all those sort of songs. But then I have like a very relaxing one. So I like, try to sort, I like to have lists where I, I know exactly in what kind of a mood I am. Yeah. And I use that. So for the raw one, it's basically just random Everything kind of goes, uh, and that's been that was my first Spotify playlist, and I 
Wow. The six that I just kept it's with it. The one you figure, the one that you couldn't figure out how to make private, apparently. <laughs> because so it's, if you funny. Google it, yeah, that's fine. Sorry, I use my mom's Spotify, so it doesn't matter. Do you really? Yeah, nobody's gonna find mine. <laughs> Why? That's Guys, awesome. just sign a new ticket. Still has his mom's Spotify. It's great. I don't get why Nickelback gets as much shit as they do. Like a lot of popular bands are yeah. no lamer or softer mm -hmm. or whatever than them. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Photograph was on there. And you that's a cl classic, but so good. of course, San Quentin is a great song. Yeah, what other song tells you to look at this photograph? <laughs> I can't think of any. I just love the meme when they just erase the look photo at this, and just yes. look at this graph. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> dude, you should use that. Like after, if you guys have like a good month or whatever, one somebody gets like player <laughs> of the week graph, or whatever like, above average. <laughs> yeah, look at this graph. That's actually gold. <laughs> I'm gonna put him on my helmet. The next helmet. Oh please! Holy graph. shit, dude! If one of you guys oh, had yeah. Chad Kroger a holding up a graph, that would be all-time helmet. Yeah, I like that. And I really don't want there to be any explanation for it. Like, how can you explain that away? Yeah. But I, I would love for one of you at some point to have yeah, Chad like Kroger. That. He's, you know what it is? He's holding up the graph, and then the graph is silhouette. your face. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. What's we'll the weirdest it. thing you've ever put on a mask? <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> no, there's nothing really bad. Uh, I've had a lot of masks. I think my my favorite one was the Bowser mask back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was just Bowser all over. That's funny. But then I had, there's this, so there's, I think there's a French old cartoon where there's basically a, a stick figure on a line and they used to call him Lean is <clears throat> on the line in Swedish. So I just used him all of, on my mask all over. So I think that's probably the, the weirdest one. Um, I think, but also having, even like this year, having Taylor Sagan on one <laughs> of the sides, it's also like making a guest appearance. It's a little oh, weird, yeah. but I also have Marshy, so yeah. it kind of makes people up. People love it. that. I saw Twitter was going crazy for the fact that you included that on the mask. So yeah. one last question, because it always fascinates me with goalies. It's like a legitimate hockey question. What's like your ideal night in net? Because I know a lot of guys like to get a lot of work mm -hmm. to stay locked in. Like, what's your ideal night in net look like? You remember what we talked about last year, or was it like two years ago? What? At least a windmill per period. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> Ideally. Ideal. Yeah. But like a natural windmill. Exactly. Yeah. You just like, touch the sun and then you just yeah. come back slow. Yeah. Full split. It has to be. Yeah. We get fired up about that. Yeah, we do. Um, I get fired up when you, even though when you do splits, because I can't really do splits. <laughs> So I used to lose that. my mind whenever he does like a <laughs> six split save. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. But yeah, just a lot of shots, I think, ideally, is like shots early. And, uh, you know, just something that keeps you in the game. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, a couple 10 bellers aren't bad. So, yeah, I think the game that I had against Calgary last year is probably mm -hmm. like the best six, sort of a game. 60 shots, yeah. Um. You're letting in goals, but it, like you're, right. it feels like when you're done and you really felt like, okay, if I wasn't this good, we probably would have lost with mm -hmm. six one or something yeah. like that. When you can feel I'm like sure. you ten to one, but yeah, <laughs> but then you feel like you actually made like a big difference mm -hmm. because sometimes when you're playing a game, you just stop in pucks and you know you don't feel like you're doing anything except for your job. But then mm -hmm. sometimes you feel like, okay, I was a difference maker today, and that was one of those games when you when I really felt okay. I had a heavy influence on this game, and you like to have that, but not you don't want to have that every night. You don't you don't want to be the only you know only solution to or the cause of winning or losing. Mm -hmm. But we're in a position where <laughs> most of the days I was going to say are, there's not many games we can't <laughs> yeah can't hide. Yeah, we're always kind of that uh, center of attention, and that's why we love it though. You know, it's it's cool to just that's why you get so excited for each other when you win, man, because it's like such a hard league to win in, and when you do, it's uh. You want to make it like you've been there before, but it is. It's something you look back, you know, take five minutes. We always talk about it after every game. You know, we go up to each other and just be like, hey, like this about it, great game, move on. You know, and that's that five minutes that you feel good and then take the positives and move on. So that's yeah. something that uh, we definitely take seriously. And as you should, man, we work hard. Lastly, I will say, like, you guys are the goalies in Boston that Boston loves. Boston was so fucking mean to Tuca, <laughs> so like it's 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 very refreshing to see that there is like a great two way relationship uh, mm -hmm. between the goalies and the fans right now. Yeah, but I never I never understood why. Never made sense. Yeah, never made both, sense. Brother. I hated yeah. playing against Tukes. Mm -hmm. Of I, course. I, I think I never I never won. I never won a single game against 
Uh, I won one game against Boston, but he was backing up that game. <laughs> so I never won against him, and I hated going against him because it was Stud. like, how can I beat this guy? It's just the lazy thing to do is play, blame the goaltender if the team loses. So yeah, it's, sure. It works for a <laughs> like lot of he fans. Was the he was the one of the top five goalies every single year. Preaching yeah. the choir, yeah. buddy. Oh, <laughs> the, the, there was times in Boston where he'd be like a daily radio topic of like, can they win with Tuka? Blah, blah. And literally at the time, Tuka had the all-time highest save percentage ever. It was like mm -hmm. him, Hashik, right. and like a couple other guys. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's great that you guys do the shit you do and the people fuck with it. So thanks for coming on, guys. <laughs> thanks for having us. Well yeah. said. <laughs>